Hey guys, welcome back. Now, we review quite a few TVs here on Technobabble from all sorts of price ranges. Uh, and now we have actually a new brand or a new challenger uh, to the TV market right here in Singapore. And I'm talking about a brand called iFalcon. So iFalcon is very new to Singapore, but they are a pretty established brand already in, uh, in the Southeast Asia region. So some of the countries like India, Philippines, a few other countries, they've already made a name for themselves and now they are here in Singapore. Now in Singapore, iFalcon has released three TVs or at least three sizes of their 4K Smart TV. There's a 43 inch, 50 inch and a 55. So iFalcon has actually sent over the 55 inch. So a very big thank you to iFalcon for sending over that TV for review. All right, so taking a look at the specs of our 55 inch variant. So it is a 4K TV. Uh, so the resolution is about 3840 by 2160. Now it supports HDR10 uh, and is an LED IPS panel. Now the TV also supports a very special feature called micro dimming, which we, I will explain a bit later on. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's a smart TV. So it also has Android, specifically Android TV version 9. Also with Google integration or Google Assistant integration, which again, we will talk about really soon. So of course, with a smart TV, you're going to have some like computer-like components. So this has, um, well, on, on the website at least, it says that it's an ARM A55 chip. Uh, it doesn't say which brand, but I think the most common one is MediaTek, but again, I'm not quite sure. But it's definitely an A55 chip. Uh, it also has two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. Now, in terms of I.O., this TV has three HDMI ports, specifically HDMI 2.0. And yes, it does support ARC specifically on HDMI 2. However, do note that ARC or the CEC function is actually turned off by default. So once you boot up the TV, you go into Android settings, uh, just make sure to turn uh, the HDMI CEC on. Now it also has two USB ports, specifically USB 2.0. So yes, you can plug in a hard drive or flash drive or anything like that. Uh, it supports a whole wide range of different media formats or almost every single media format actually. Uh, and yeah, music, videos, all that, no issue. Now, another nice feature is that they actually have your headphones out as well. So that's really cool. Although you're probably going to need a really long uh, 3.5 millimeter cable to run it all the way to where you're sitting. But that's not your only option if you want to use the headphones, right? Now, it also has Bluetooth. Now, specifically Bluetooth 5.0, which is a fantastic feature to have. So you can plug in your, you know, your Bluetooth headphones. And not just that, if you have like one of those air mouse uh, remotes, or even like a keyboard, you can plug that in, which makes it a lot easier when you're typing to search things on YouTube or Netflix. Now, of course, the TV is gonna support Wi-Fi, but I would highly recommend, if possible, use the included LAN port as well. By LAN, I mean like Ethernet port. Now, the reason is, even though it has Wi-Fi, it doesn't support five gigahertz connection, so only the 2.4 gigahertz connection, which for some people is gonna be fine, but for me, if I have a lot of devices connected, so I've got my computer, I've got my phones, um, I've got, you know, a whole bunch of smart home devices all connected to the 2.4 gigahertz connection. It can be a little congested. So like if you're trying to stream 4K content, some of you might have problems. So if you do have uh, some of this like buffering issues when you're connected to a 2.4 connection, I would highly recommend uh, use the Ethernet port instead. Now in terms of placement of the I.O., I really like the fact that iFalcon has decided to put it on the right side of the TV, not at the back or not underneath. Now, the reason why I like it so much is that if you mount your TV to the wall like I do, you know, you realize that if the ports are underneath or at the back, it can be really hard to access once you've mounted it to the wall. And then if you want to change something, you might have to take out the entire TV because you can't assess it. But having it on the right makes it really accessible, really easy to see. And you can, you know, disconnect cables and plug it in whenever you want without having to take the TV out. So that's a really good idea, I felt. And so well done. Which, yeah, brings me to the design of the TV. So the TV, I would say design-wise, well, it's sleek, minimalistic, um, nothing stands out, but that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, all right? Um, it's got a bezel-less design. It's not the only one to have a bezel-less design, of course, but it's still a nice design to have. Now, apart from the sleek design, at the bottom, you also see like a mini, like a panel or a lip. Uh, and you actually you can actually see like white LED lights on it. And if you look closely, it has a cloth material very similar to the Google Home Mini. And like I said, this TV does have uh, Google Assistant integration. So I think that little thing is sort of like a design feature, you know, just to remind you that it does have Google Assistant. And yeah, of course you do get a remote. And I don't usually talk about it that much, but there's something I find really special about the remote now. First of all, it's really well built, feels really solid, has a good weight to it. Uh, and I will admit that this thing might not matter to most people, but for some reason, I love the buttons. They are really clicky. Um, a lot of remotes that, in fact, every remote that I've used, regardless of price or, or the TV or anything like that, 
it's always been very rubbery and very mushy when you press it. This one, even though yeah, it's still rubber buttons, it's really clicky. And for someone like me who likes like mechanical keys on my keyboard, it was actually quite satisfying. Now, I really want to talk about Android 10 and specifically Google Home system, but we'll talk about that soon. Before that, I want to talk about the picture quality. Now, of course, you're not going to get super good quality like OLED TVs or QLED TVs. It would be unfair uh, to expect that. But having said that, with this IPS LED panel, um, I was actually really impressed. The colors are really vibrant. Uh, it did a really good job of with the videos, with the colors as well, accuracy wise as well, I thought really good. Now, like I said, the TV supports HDR or specifically HDR 10. And one thing I found pretty interesting was that a lot of TVs that I reviewed or my own TV as well, which supports HDR, uh, when you play a HDR video, it just plays it and you kind of have to assume that it's playing in HDR. This is the first TV that I've seen where if you are pre or showing a video or if like you're playing a game, you're like a PS5 and it's in HDR or the signal is in HDR 10, you get like a indication like a logo on the top left hand corner uh, telling you that it's playing in HDR 10. Now, it's not that big a deal to most people, but I like the fact that I'm being informed that this particular signal is in HDR 10. And yeah, if you've seen some of my other TV reviews, uh, you know that I reviewed some TVs with HDR, some LEDs as well, LED TVs. Uh, but I have to say, this might actually be among the top in terms of picture quality. I was actually pleasantly surprised with that HDR uh, feature. The, the, the blacks are really deep. Obviously, like I said, not as, not as good as OLED, but still really, really good. Now, I think a big part of it is that feature that I spoke about earlier in this review, uh, micro dimming. Now, what micro dimming is, is well, sort of trying to have the same outcome as local area dimming without having backlight zones. So instead of having uh, zones in your LED or your backlight that you can control, uh, this adjusts the contrast. So it has contrast zones on the panel, specifically I think like 1,296 specific zones. So it actually adjusts the contrast according to the image. Now in terms of the effectiveness, uh, I think it really depends on what you're watching. So if you're watching a scene where it's really dark, it's actually very, very effective. Most of the TV looks like it's totally black. Uh, it's really impressive. And then when you have the certain parts in that scene that has light, that certain zone would be quite bright. So it actually was quite effective. However, of course, when you're in a day scene where you don't get a lot of uh, dark areas in that particular scene, you probably won't tell a difference. So about Android TV. Now, if you've seen my other reviews, you would know that Android TV today is still my favorite operating system for smart TVs. I don't like some brands that have built their own uh, operating system, smart operating system, usually based on Linux. It, it's very restrictive. You know, people have to create apps for it. Whereas if you use Android TV, you immediately have access to like thousands of different apps that you can use. So yeah, it's the same thing here. You get access to a whole bunch of different apps and iFalcon has actually, uh, you know, downloaded some by default. Uh, some that, you know, might not be as useful here because they don't work in Singapore, but that's fine. Like the TCL channel doesn't really work. Uh, but there's another app that I really like. It's called uh, Magic Connect. So that one allows you to do a few things. So one is you can actually use the app uh, to control Android instead of using the remote that's given, which is nice because then, you know, if you happen to lose the remote or if it's somewhere else far away or someone else has got the remote, you can actually open up the app, connect to the TV and control Android. But not only that, it also has a screen mirroring function. So you can actually mirror your phone to your TV, uh, which actually is a really good feature. However, it's, it's good for specific users. So like, if you want to show something on a browser, it's really good. Uh, showing pictures that you've taken, fantastic. Uh, videos can be okay, but I think for really long videos or really high quality videos, you might see some stuttering, but that's just the nature of this sort of mirroring thing. But yeah, really, really good for showing photos. But now we come to what is my favorite feature of this iFalcon TV. And again, this is actually available on all the different screen size variants. Um, like I said, it has Google Assistant integration, which obviously this is not the first. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Google Assistant. I have Google Homes everywhere in my house. I use it extensively. I got smart bulbs, smart switches, even my water heater is smart. Uh, so, you know, I use it extensively. So with this TV, having Google Assistant integrated, I can use that to control anything in my house as well. It links to my uh, Google account so I can do anything that I want that I use with my Google Home or my Google Home Mini. However, for this TV, it takes it like one extra level. Now, not only can I use Google Home or Google Assistant for what I normally use, I can control TV specific functions with Google Assistant. So I can control the volume, I can change channels, 
I can actually change input sources. So if let's say I'm watching uh, YouTube, right, and then after that I want to play my PS5 that's on a, a different input, I can tell Google to switch the TV's input to the PS5 and it will do it. In fact, if you think about it, things like volume control, channel changing, uh, input changing, uh, that's usually what you use the remote for like 99% of the time. So technically, you don't even need the remote at all. But yeah, this feature kind of blew my mind. I was really, really impressed. I mean, it's not the first TV with Google Assistant integration, of course. But like I said, it's another level. I don't think that feature of changing channels, changing input sources, changing your volume with Google Assistant, I don't think that's possible on others. I'm not quite sure. I've never tested it out. But for this one, definitely you can do it. And I was so impressed. All right, so let's talk about the price. So the 55 inch variant uh, of the iFalcon Smart TV comes in at about 698 Singapore dollars. Now, like I mentioned, there is a 43 inch and a 50 inch. So the 43 inch comes in at about 498 Singapore dollars and the 50 inch comes in at 568 Singapore dollars. Now, just to confirm with you guys, so yeah, they're all 4K TVs. They all have the same features, all with Android TV, all with the same level of Google Assistant integration, as well as the CPU, the GPU, RAM, and the storage, they are all the same across all three. Now, of course, with this kind of devices, warranty is really important. So you get three years of warranty with any of these uh, three sizes, it's all the same, all right? Uh, they don't have on-site warranty per se, which means that they don't come and fix the TV. But if there's an issue, they will come, pick it up, uh, bring it back to their service center, they'll do whatever repairs necessary, and they will bring it back. So you don't have to bring it to a service center, which is great, because how on earth are you going to carry like a 55-inch TV by yourself all the way there? So to summarize, I think iFalcon has entered the market in Singapore with a bang. They offer three really good value TVs, uh, with really good performance, you know, and I love the fact that the Google Assistant integration is basically next level. Uh, having said that, I would love to see 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi included in their TVs in the future and maybe even bigger sizes. But right now, iFalcon, I will have to say, really good job. All right, so that about wraps up my review of the iFalcon Smart TVs. Now, if you like this video, you know what to do, and I will love it if you will subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. I'm JP and I'll see you real soon.